Hi, I'm Chris Devine. Uh, I'm a lab analyst in the Department of Archaeology at Monticello, and I'd like to talk to you about one of my favorite artifacts that uh, were found here at Site 6. Uh, the artifacts I'd like to talk about are called jaw harps, and I have four examples here. A jaw harp was a small musical instrument that you would put in your mouth and would hold with one hand and pluck the other side with your other hand. Um, the jaw harps that we find here are made out of iron. You can see two of them here, very corroded. And then also there are two that are made out of copper alloy, both of which are, are very common. You're seeing just fragments of jaw harps. Um, a jaw harp generally was made of a frame, an iron frame or a copper alloy frame. And it had a what they called a tongue or a lamella in the center of it. And that lamella would come out and then curve at the end into kind of an angle. And the way in which you would play it is you would put the harp in your mouth. This is a good representation of it. And you would pluck that lamella. And you could alter the sound by altering the uh, shape of your mouth, moving your tongue, and also altering the airflow in your mouth as well. So, a little bit of history of jaw harps. Jaw harps uh, during the 18th and early 19th century were produced primarily in Great Britain and Europe and exported over to America. We know from newspaper advertisements that jaw harps uh, were commonly listed in merchandise that was being sold by merchants. We also know from other archaeological evidence and documentary evidence that jaw harps were obtained by people from all different socioeconomic and racial backgrounds. And that kind of gets me to our jaw harps here and why we think they're so unique. The four jaw harps that were found at Site 6 were found in units associated with the northern cabin where we believed enslaved laborers lived. There were two other cabins here as well, we believe. Uh, we did not find any jaw harp fragments in those areas. And the reason that's significant is that this is the largest assemblage of jaw harps found at any site at Monticello. So what does that tell us, basically? Well, there's a couple of theories we have. First of all, maybe the fact that there were so many jaw harps at the northern cabin is indicative of the fact that there was a musician there. Uh, musicians, if they were adept at playing the jaw harp, could uh, play with two in their mouth. And if you had a real uh, skill at it, you could play multiple jaw harps and switch them out. Um, another reason that, we, that there might have been an abundance of jaw harps at uh, the northern cabin has to do with some other artifacts that we find as well. We found an abundance of ceramics, especially higher end ceramics, and personal items such as buckles, buttons, beads. Um, this suggests that there might have been social stratification uh, amongst the enslaved people that were living at this, this particular site. The northern cabin perhaps had a group of people that were able to um, produce things in their gardens and sell them to have some type of disposable income, whereas maybe the individuals that were occupying uh, the southeastern and southwestern cabins did not have that ability for whatever reasons. So jaw harps are a very interesting find that we've, we've discovered here at Site 6.